In this video, I'll demonstrate the Equipment Framework B of Machine Builder Libraries. Equipment Framework B provides machine code framework based on international standards. The framework provides a platform for easy development of applications. The framework has three types of modules, Unit, Equipment Supervisor and Equipment Module. The physical model of unit and equipment are derived from ISA 88 standard. The procedure model of modes and states are derived from TR 88 2015 version. The framework has event capturing of states and modes and also provision to add custom events to help in easy diagnostics. The event language can also be selected from these available languages. It is also possible to add custom language which is compatible with ASCII characters. The solution is scalable from a single unit module and equipment module to a machine distributed over several controllers and split into several machine sections. Using application code manager, it's easy to generate an application framework with pre-connected logics and visualization content. This helps in faster and easy application development. I have a winder unwinder application demo. The application is divided into four sections. The main machine has unwinder, nip and winder devices. These equipment modules are directly connected with unit state model. The next two sections are role changeover turret for winder and unwinder. These sections have their own equipment supervisor with its own state model. An equipment supervisor enables the equipments under it to be operated independent of unit state model or run in sync with the unit state model. An equipment supervisor can have one or many equipment modules under it. Here the winder turret system is used to unload full roll from winder and load an empty roll. While the section is important for machine operation, it is not required to be under unit control always. Thus, if required, the turret section can be put under local control and operated independently without disturbing the machine operation. The fourth section is the auxiliary devices like blowers, trimmers, etc. The auxiliary equipment supervisor and equipment is part of another controller. The equipment supervisor is connected to unit using the interface programs. The unit interface extends the unit so that its command exists in the remote controller. The equipment supervisor interface extends the equipment supervisor so that its status exists in the unit controller. Like turret, the auxiliary devices are only needed for some material. Thus, when not needed, the auxiliary system can be removed from the unit control. A quick overview of the code. This is the unit module program. In unit module, these are the routines for mode and state request. The mode and state can be requested programmatically or from operator interface. This is the routine for consolidating equipment faults and also to add unit level faults. This routine contains unit level events. This routine contains the state model instruction. All the equipment state complete status is consolidated in this routine. This routine consists of instruction to control the tower lamp. In state model instruction, the user can configure up to 31 modes. This parameter is to configure the states where mode transition is allowed. This parameter is to enable the states for each mode. This parameter is to enter the mode name. The equipment module programs for line control, winder and unwinder are here. This is the equipment supervisor program for winder turret and unwinder turret. Under each of the equipment supervisor is their respective equipment programs. The equipment supervisor program also has similar routine arrangement as unit. The equipment supervisor has additional code for operating under unit control or under local control. 
The equipment modules under unit or equipment supervisor are all same. Each equipment module has routines for mode and state, status in and out. User can add the action logic for each state in these routines. Additional routines can be added as necessary per user requirement. This is the interface program for auxiliary equipment supervisor. This is the second controller. Here you can see the unit interface. Under unit interface is the equipment supervisor and the equipment modules. Moving to HMI. The framework consists of HMI screens for unit and equipment supervisor state and mode control. On top is the machine status. This is the unit mode and state status. These are the state command buttons for unit. The buttons will be enabled as per the state that is allowed. This is the navigation button for machine mode selection. These are the secondary navigation buttons. This is for user login. This is the machine state model. This is the machine speed setting. This is the HMI diagnostics. These are the navigation object for equipment supervisor. On top is the status of equipment supervisor. These are the state command buttons for equipment supervisor. These are currently disabled as the equipment supervisor is under unit control. Once the control source is changed to local, the equipment supervisor can be commanded independent of the unit. This is the mode selection for equipment supervisor. This is the state model for equipment supervisor. This is the event faceplate where all the unit and equipment supervisor events are captured. User can also add events as per application. This is the language selection faceplate for the events. Apart from framework, this application also have other library objects. The analog and digital IOs are handled using the IO module, analog channel and digital channel library objects. The recipe management is done using the recipe management library object. The tension control is done using the tension control library object. For the demo, first I'll demonstrate the basic operation. The unit is in stop state. All the equipment supervisors are in unit control, so they are also displaying stop state. I'll press the reset command button to call the resetting state. Now the unit is in idle state. I'll press the start button to start the machine. Now the unit is in execute state. To temporarily hold the machine, use the hold command. Now the unit is in held state. In this state, the line master is stopped, but rest of the access relations are maintained. When unhold, the line master run is resumed. Now the unit is back to the execute state. To stop the machine and de-energize all the access, use the stop command. Now the unit is in stop state. Next I'll demonstrate the mode change options. The mode change permissions for each state is configurable in the mode transition configuration. In this application, I have three modes, production, maintenance and manual. In maintenance mode, I have programmed the logic to engage all equipment with line master similar to production mode. 
Instead of continuously running the line master, the operator is given control to inch the master when required to do maintenance. Since the axis relation are similar in maintenance and production, I have configured the mode transition to allow the mode change between production and maintenance in held and idle state. This saves time and unnecessary resetting of machine while switching between maintenance and production. First, I will select the maintenance mode. Press reset. Now the unit is in idle state. Press start. Now the inch button is enabled, so operator is allowed to inch the machine. While in execute state, the mode change is not allowed, thus we see the mode lock status. Next I will press the hold button. Now the machine is in held state. Now you can see the mode change is allowed. I will select the production mode. Now the machine switch to production mode. While in held state, it looks like mode can be changed to manual. But since manual mode transition is not configured, even if I select manual mode, the mode changeover will not happen. Press unhold. Now the machine is executing in production mode. By doing hold and mode change, I have avoided the unnecessary resetting of machine. Next I will show how equipment supervisor can be selected as local control and unit control. I will open the auxiliary equipment supervisor faceplate. Currently the control source is under unit. I will switch to local control. Now the state command buttons are enabled. I will press reset and start. You can notice though the machine is under stop state, the auxiliary supervisor is in running state. I will press the stop button. It is also possible to change the modes in equipment supervisor while in local control. Now you can see the equipment supervisor is in maintenance mode while the unit is in production mode. This gives freedom to operator to operate the equipment under supervisor to be run independent or run in sync with the unit. All this is done without disturbing the unit state model or modifying the code. While auxiliary equipment supervisor is in maintenance, I will go ahead and reset and run the machine. Now the machine is in production and in execute state, while the auxiliary is in maintenance and in stop state. Once the maintenance is done, I will switch the auxiliary to unit control. You can see the mode is changed automatically to production and the equipment supervisor is commanded to go to running state. The status is shown as remote and linked. Now the auxiliary is in sync with the unit state model. Next I will demonstrate the event and language switching. This is the event program where the event queue, analytics, language switching code resides. The event and language switching is an optional add-on and can be selected while instantiating the unit module in ACM. When selected, the unit and equipment supervisor program will come with the event routine that has event capturing code for state and mode change. It is also possible to add user events in the same event queue using the event create instruction. This is the event faceplate. The user has choice of a compact faceplate or a full faceplate. This is the full faceplate with all the details. This is the event message. The type as information or warning or fault. The ID, category, action and value can be used for user events. This is the event capture time. In event faceplate there are 4 pages. This is the list for all events. This list only shows the fault events. This list shows the analytics of all the events, which means the number of count for each event type. 
This page shows the list analytics for the vault events. The event queue can be cleared using this reset button. This is a user developed navigation faceplate for event and language. I have navigation button for controller A and controller B events. In controller B events, you can see the events related to the equipment supervisor. The event program also has the code for language selection for events. The required languages are to be selected while instantiating the code in ACM. Here in the language faceplate, you can see the following languages are enabled as these were selected while instantiating the framework in ACM. Currently, the language selected is English. I will switch the language to German. I'll reset the machine and start to create few events. I'll open the event faceplate. Now you can see the events are captured in German language. For more information, download Machine Builder libraries from Rockwell Automation website. Thanks for watching the video.